In August of 87, subscribers of Games Workshop's monthly Weisworf magazine noticed an odd page in their copy. At the bottom of the starfield scenery of space, a warrior stood, clad in strange armor, and on the top of the page the soon-to-be-released game's logo could be seen. The September issue was filled to the brim with details of this new sensation, with the gorgeous artwork of John Sipik on the front page. On the 33rd page was the introductory article about the brand new game, Hail the Emperor. It is quite probable that whoever opened this magazine would meet 40k for the first time in their life by reading an old version of the iconic paragraph we all know. For more than a hundred centuries, the Emperor of Mankind has sat immobile on the golden throne of Earth. He is the master of mankind by the will of the gods and master of a million worlds by the might of his inexhaustible armies. He is a rotting carcass, riding invisibly with power from the dark age of technology. He is the Carrion Lord of the Imperium to whom a thousand souls are sacrificed every day. To be a man in such times is to be one amongst untold billions. It is to live in the cruelest and most bloody regime imaginable. This is the tale of these times. It is a universe you can live today if you dare, for this is a dark and terrible era where you will find little comfort or hope. If you want to take part in the adventure, then prepare yourself now. Forget the power of technology, science and common humanity. Forget the promise of progress and understanding, for there is no peace amongst the stars, only an eternity of carnage and slaughter and the laughter of thirsting gods. But the universe is a big place and whatever happens, you will not be missed. After the moody intro, we face a montage of the game's illustrations alongside a teaser detailing the world and mechanics of Rogue Trader. On the six pages of this ad you can find sufficient information to catch your imagination, but the wording of the article makes it clear that they want to take advantage of the famous sister game Warhammer Fantasy, often comparing the two. Right here in the first paragraph it is already clearly stated that this game is a sort of science fantasy, and the kind of tabletop game where you are not required to have hundreds of figures. A dozen should be enough. What a hilarious supposition. Unfortunately for us, the article is worded in a way which is hard to enjoy. I would even call it irritating. Each paragraph of the game's description is followed by a paragraph of a simple story. As we find out, the mysterious previously seen warrior is a fanatic space marine, and the story told is about a squad of such warriors. A squad from the Space Wolves Space Marine chapter, to be precise. The marines are searching for the survivors of a colony which was overrun by savage space orcs. All this is taking place in an unwelcoming planet, where the sun shines so bright that it can immediately blind anyone. After a short skirmish with the orcs, the squad finds the surviving humans. However, they soon discover that the miserable remaining colonists are afflicted by horrible mutations, and thus the squad begins their immediate extermination. The teaser tells us that the game is set in a similarly ruthless but diverse world. The untold number of human citizens of the Imperium are divided into various subspecies, whose life is controlled by a vast church state. Society is pervaded by superstition, and the value of human life is close to zero. Technology is witchcraft to these people, such little is their understanding. And this Imperium is forced into constant war by a number of alien races, such as Orcs and Gretchens, and the space elf race of the far future, the so-called Eldar. In addition, you can control many other creatures on the tabletop, and even otherworldly plants are playable. The strange history of the world is also mentioned. The golden age of humanity has ended in bloodshed, but 10,000 years ago a legendary figure started building his own empire. He was simply called the Emperor, and he was the first and most powerful of a new kind of man known as Psykers. The Emperor is still alive to this day, great powers are contained within his body, now a rotting carcass, and he guides the many spacecraft of the Imperium using his powers. The technology found in Rogue Trader's world is also detailed. You can not only find enormous war machines, spacecraft, tanks, barely understood force weapons in the Imperium, but also crossbows, slings and even Stone Age technology. Despite using the game system of the mostly medieval Warhammer fantasy, armor becomes a more valuable asset. You can also use Psykers in the game, individuals gifted with supernatural powers similar to the Emperor. They are persecuted and hunted for the danger they pose, but sometimes they are recruited into the bodies of the Imperium. There are other psychically attuned creatures as well, such as vampires. Yes, you heard that right. 
There is a noteworthy paragraph in this teaser where promises are made regarding the future of the game. The lore, the rules and the number of available figures will all be expanded soon. Furthermore, there is word of two supplements in the making and the mention of meta vehicles. In case you're already looking forward to the new game, the last paragraph will assure you that not only will you find an introductory battle in the rulebook, but also a number of illustrations and dioramas. The author of the article shows their confidence the most with this sentence. Warhammer 40k has to be one of the best illustrated games ever produced. Looking at the many pictures by the text, I don't think anybody will complain. On the following pages, we are informed that the 288-page rulebook can be yours for a mere 14 pounds and 95 pennies, but that's not all of it. You can also become the proud owner of a squad of 17 Space Orc Raiders, savage warriors, who have been the arch enemies of humanity since their first encounter with each other. Ah, spit. If green-skinned aliens are not what you fancy, you can also choose the squad of 30 Space Marines. Their greatness is emphasized in a paragraph of text, where they are called Angels of Death. These warriors are recruited from the hardened scum of the city bottom, and they are made into deadly warriors by the use of psychosurgery, indoctrination, and other often little means. We also learn that space marines are divided into a thousand chapters, each with its own name and base of operations called a fortress monastery. We can once again find our beloved space marines in the column called Evi Metal, which is about modeling. Not only can you once again see marines and orcs here, but also an inquisitor and a couple of dwarfs armed with strange weapons. Mm. In the Illuminations column, where illustrations are often featured, you can read an account of John Blanche, the excellent illustrator of Games Workshop. He tells about the talented Stephen Tappin, whose work you can see on the pages of the Rogue Trader rulebook. But that's all we get. If our curiosity is not satisfied regarding the new Games Workshop game, we must look into the pages of the rulebook ourselves, which we will definitely do in the next video. One more thing. On the first pages of the magazine, it is reported that Trick Priestley is working on an expansion for Warhammer Fantasy, which will be about medieval sieges. I wonder if this will come up in the future. I also found the mention of a chance to win one of 55 copies of the Rogue Trader rulebook, but for the love of God I couldn't find out how. It must have been on the back cover or something.